Welcome back. All right, it's Christmas Eve. So why not have a discussion about which teams I've cheered for and all the times I've watched sports. Now, of course, over the last seven, eight years, it's been dominated by hockey. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Before that, um, you know, I was still very much into hockey, but I'd watch other sports. There were nights where I was like, eh, I'm not going to watch hockey. I want to watch the football game or I want to watch baseball or basketball. Um, and basketball, you'll notice there's a lot of logos up here. So I'm going to go through each team's logo and I'm going to explain why I was a fan, became a fan, or isn't a fan. Uh, the NBA, I really don't follow that much. And honestly, Major League Baseball, NFL. Because the NHL has that 82-game schedule, it's such a long season. Um, I know that if I don't focus on the NHL, mostly I'm in, I'm in some trouble when it comes to uh, my time management and everything and just my energy level. So... Starting with the NBA, and what I've done is I've put this in order of the league I've followed the least to the one that I've followed the most. Um, and of course, the NHL ones, I don't really need to go through that much. I'll barely touch on them because I've already got videos on the other channel in this. So the Boston Celtics, it's my team. Um, the Boston Celtics, back in the 80s, the Celtics were against the Lakers. And it's like, okay, it's Larry Bird, it's Magic Johnson. I liked Larry Bird better. I liked Robert Parrish. I liked Kevin McHale. I, I like the I like the Celtics more, and so I was a Celtics fan in the '80s, and to this day, if the Celtics are doing well, and I see that in the standings, I'm like, good for them. Um, and and yeah, then there's the LA Clippers. I like the Clippers because they're the underdog. They're the ultimate underdog. They don't win anything, and they've had good teams that still don't win. And we'll get down to my teams as well that have had that problem too. But uh, yeah, the Clippers are a team that to this day I still, you know, silently root for and hope someday they win a championship for Clipper fans. I'm sure there's Clipper fans. Uh, Toronto Raptors, you know, the Toronto Raptors, um, I wasn't a huge fan of the whole time that they were around. But uh, when they built things up and they ended up winning themselves a championship, I was really proud of them. I thought it was great. Uh, right now, things have been, I mean, it's been up and down for Toronto since then, really. But uh, I think they've shown that yeah, you can win a win a championship in Canada, and Toronto Raptors did exactly that. So kudos to them for that. And maybe the Blue Jays will end up being there sooner or later. Is it going to be sooner? Is it going to be later? Don't spoil it for me now. But anyways, yeah, the Raptors uh, are a team that I've definitely rooted for. Now, the, the San Antonio Spurs, I always thought the San Antonio Spurs were an excellent team when it came to just, I don't know, they outworked everybody. Um the way I remember it, they were a pretty clean team, too, when they were winning their championships. Um, coming out of an era where you had the Detroit Pistons, who weren't exactly the cleanest of teams. The Bulls weren't really the cleanest of teams, either. And it felt like with the Spurs, it was it was different. And, uh, yeah, they were also a team that I didn't feel like got as much attention as some of the other NBA teams. And so I rooted for them on that basis as well. Golden State Warriors, at the time I picked them, they were easily the worst team in basketball. I, I'm trying to remember what the record was that one season where I was like, you know what, I'll just start rooting for the Warriors. But I think they won like 14 games. It was, something, it was some low number of games they won. And I was like, all right, I'll cheer for them. Nobody did. Now, of course, you know, Wagon and Curry and all that. But yeah, they're, they're absolutely, uh, there was a time when they weren't good. And I rooted for them. Which brings me to the Timberwolves. Timberwolves, ultimate underdog. Yep, there's that there for them as well. I would love to see a, some team in Minnesota end up winning a championship. And so the, the T-Wolves, I, I would love to see that happen for them. Uh, Houston Rockets, I was mentioning about the San Antonio Spurs. I like the Rockets too. Apparently there's something about me and Texas teams, kind of, sort of, not the Cowboys. But yeah, Houston Rockets, I rooted for them as well. And I like seeing them win championships too. So... Uh, really, for me, in, ge in general, the way that it works is that I'm, you know, if I'm watching a sport, getting into a sport, or just watching in general, I need to have somebody I'm rooting for in every game. So even now when I'm watching hockey, there is a team I'm rooting for any given night. It's not always the same team. That's why I don't tell people in the review, here's who I was rooting for tonight, because it would change frequently, and there'd be a lot of, well, you cheered for this team last night, why didn't you cheer for them tonight? There's different circumstances. There are different reasons I might cheer for a team on any given night, which I understand is different from the way that a lot of other other fans in sports work. Uh, the, the the tribalist idea that you must cheer for this team and this team only or else, you know, you're not the true fan. But we'll move on to Major League Baseball. Uh, the San Diego Padres, that's my team. They're never going to win anything. It's never going to happen. And I'm going to act surprised when they never win anything, but I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, but... 
they have nice jerseys. I love that Padre logo, the swinging logo, swinging Padre. I, you know, it's it's all great. I don't think they're ever going to win anything, but at least I've got a really nice Padres jersey. The important thing is that I have that. Am I wearing it? No. Um, Toronto Blue Jays. I've, I've cheered for the Blue Jays when they won their World Series. Uh, I was uh, actually at the same person's house both times. It was somebody from my church uh, where we went over that first year, watched them win the World Series, went over the second year, watched them win the World Series again. And, you know, for the Blue Jays, I've always had a soft spot for them. Obviously, there were two Canadian teams when I was growing up. I was more of an Expos fan. The Expos not back in the in the Major League Baseball realm yet. I would be very happy to see them see the Montreal Expos come back. I don't know how you make it work, but I'd like to see it happen. Uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. Why? Because they've been pretty bad for a while, and I mean a long while. Um, couple of couple of decent seasons. I think four or five years ago. It it what are years? What does it matter? But yeah, the Pirates are a team that. I didn't like in the 80s because they were kind of a bit of a wagon at that. And then there were certain players I wasn't a fan of on the Pittsburgh Pirates either. But now, yeah, I'd love to see them win something. Colorado Rockies, are they an underdog? Yep, it kind of explains itself, doesn't it? Uh, most seasons, the Colorado Rockies, it feels like are underdogs. And I love the fact, too, that that thin air seems to uh, cause more home runs. And I think that's great. And I, I think it was great, too, that when Colorado came in, they kind of leaned into that. But, yeah, there's going to be more home runs here. And while we can have the debate about baseball and what's more exciting, and for me, I love a pitching matchup. Uh, there's nothing to me more exciting than a baseball game that lasts about two hours and 20 minutes, which is a pitching duel that ends up like two to one, three to two maybe. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the 25 to 15, the, the crazy home runs. I, I don't like the longer games that have like a ton of runs in them. I'm, I've never been as interested and uh, and yet, yeah, uh, it feels like that baseball gets sold with the the home runs being the big selling point. Uh, the Oakland A's, who of course are headed for Las Vegas. I've been an A's fan for a while, and I wasn't an A's fan uh, early on. But, you know, uh, again, uh, I learned to appreciate them as a small market team that could not afford to pay the same amount of money as other teams did. Uh, the Atlanta Braves... The Atlanta Braves, my fandom of them was simple. In the late 80s, they had the best pitching rotation that, to my money, for, for my money, I should say, is the best pitching rotation I've ever seen. Now, the Jays in the early 90s had a great rotation as well, but those Braves, they should have won more World Series. That pitching was fantastic. You could go Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz. It was insane. That it didn't matter which of the three you got, you're getting... And they were all different pitchers, but they were all really, really good. And I've I've always been very much a big fan of pitchers. I think one of the things that hurts my fandom of baseball now is pitchers don't pitch nearly as much. And there's all the, okay, well, now we got to switch him out because he's got to have a right-hander. Then we got to switch him out. Okay, now we're... And it just, I just... I, I don't know. It feels like there's, there's so many pitching changes now and... It's all run by the the you know the analytics, which I understand why I get that, but it for me it kind of takes some of the fun out of the game. Just personally speaking, personally, Minnesota Twins. It's not to love about the Minnesota Twins. Uh, I mentioned about the T Wolves. They're a team that's you know uh, Minnesota, and Minnesota doesn't win anything. Oddly enough, I've never really cheered for the Vikings. I apologize to Minnesota fans there, but I never really have. Um, sweet jerseys, though. I'm not going to lie. Sweet jerseys, I'd love to have one. But football jerseys are expensive for some reason. They're a t-shirt. But, yeah, the Twins. I uh, love Kirby Puckett, Gary Gaetti. That era, I was a big fan of. Um, and then the Boston Red Sox. Why not, right? Uh, when the Red Sox won that World Series after so many years of that curse being talked about, I could never have been happier as a baseball fan than I was when the Red Sox won. Now... The three nothing series comeback against the Yankees, that was pretty sweet too, and I watched that series starting with Game Four. The funny thing with that was, the Yankees are up three games to nothing, and I'm like, eh, I'll watch Game Four. I'll see how the Red Sox season end, and then they won, and then they won again, and they won again, and they won again. It was it was crazy, but um, yeah, the Red Sox have always been a team that I've rooted for. And again, this shows there are a lot of teams that I've cheered for over the years in baseball. It shifts, it changes, and it changes in the NFL as well. Now, first up is the Seahawks, and obviously I had some affinity for the Seahawks because Seattle's the closest team for me here, personally. Um, and I'm sorry, the CFL's not on the board. I've never really been a huge CFL fan, 
There have been times where I've cheered for the Lions. There have been times where I've cheered for the the Ottawa Rough Riders, who became the Renegades, the Red Blacks. They've they've expanded to Ottawa a couple of times because you have to have Ottawa to really have a true uh, National League. Uh, but outside of that, I, I've never really rooted for or against anybody. Uh, but yeah, the the Seahawks I liked. Uh, eventually, we went through the Rick Meyer era, which you know that was when you had Cortez Kennedy and not a lot else. Uh, it was it was some some rough times. Now, I mean, I still follow the Seahawks, but I wouldn't say I'm an ardent follower or supporter of the team. The Steelers is a surprise. Now, I I had to mention this. I have at times rooted for the Steelers, but I'm a huge Bengals fan. Nobody told me I wasn't allowed to root for root for these two. Now they're in the same division, right? They're guaranteed to play each other twice a year and maybe a third time if they meet in the playoffs. At that point, yeah, I'm full on rooting for the Bengals, but you know, I, I don't really have an opinion one way or the other most of the time uh, because they're not usually playing against one another. This is the argument I've always had of, okay, if, if a team I cheer for is playing against another team, say 12 times a year, it'd be hard for me, that, for me to, you know, overlook the fact that uh, one team's, you know, in the same... I, I, I can cheer for both. It gets really difficult to make that argument. But when they only play a couple times a year, I mean, really, seriously. And so for me with football, I never really cared. Uh, but yeah, the Steelers, the Bengals, and right in the middle, you'll notice the Chargers. Um, the Chargers and the Bengals are my two teams. Those are the two that, no matter what, ride or die. And for some reason, they always choose die, and I'd rather they didn't. I would rather they chose... Uh, victory in an important time um, I remember when the Chargers got to the Super Bowl I remember how crushing it was because I felt like the Chargers had a real shot in that game and then it just it just didn't work for them but I thought if things had gone just a little bit different earlier in that game who knows but anyways um, it's all these years later and I'm still thinking if only right if only all right, and then we'll get to the NHL one, and I'll make this one quick because people who watch the Hockey Channel have heard this story many, many times over. I cheer for the Canucks, I cheer for the Bruins, and you'll notice it's the Minnesota North Stars here because that's what it started out as before it was the Dallas Stars. My fandom just transferred to Dallas, which is odd since my fandom of the Quebec Nordiques did not transfer to Colorado. Sometimes it transfers, sometimes it doesn't. I assume it's something with TSA at the airport. But the Minnesota North Stars I loved in the early 80s. Uh, the Canucks I loved in the early 80s. Both of them went to Stanley Cup Finals the first two years I was watching hockey regularly. And then the Boston Bruins, they had Eddie Moog. They picked up Cam Neely. I had always liked Ray Bork. Basically what happened was Boston started picking up more and more players I liked. And so I naturally gravitated to that team um, 23 years before they met Vancouver in the playoffs. And the good news is they only play each other twice a year. I don't have to worry about the meeting in the playoffs ever again unless it's in a Stanley Cup final, which is very highly unlikely to happen. So when I hear people talk about, well, he cheers for Boston, yeah, that was 12 years ago. And the odd part is, I've never had a Boston fan say, well, you can't be a Bruins fan, you cheer for the Canucks. Why? Right. The reason why is simple. Boston won that Stanley Cup. Boston fans don't care if you cheer for the Canucks. The, uh, the idea that would be probably, they'd be like, that's too bad, but you can still cheer for Boston. Whereas for Vancouver fans, well, Boston won that final. It was a very, very hotly contested final. And so you're not allowed to cheer for Boston if you're a Canucks fan, because how dare you? Even though they're in separate conferences, they only meet twice a year, once in Vancouver and once in Boston. And everybody involved with that rivalry is gone. Everybody's gone. So... When the teams meet up against each other now, it's not even a fight fest or anything. It's just another game. Except for fans, which is why Boston comes into Vancouver on a Saturday night every single year now. Um, it's something that I don't know if it's always been the case, but I know the last few years that... And, and the ticket prices are really high for Boston too, but I, I just haven't been able to go because they've been on Saturday nights. And I do not go to hockey games on Saturday nights because of how busy Saturday is in the National Hockey League. So... Um, yeah, I, I never thought it was a big deal, and I still don't. I, I really don't think it's a big deal. Um, but there are fans who will make a much much bigger deal out of it than I think it should be because of something that happened 12 and a half years ago. So that's when you know people just aren't letting things go, is when it's 12 and a half years and they're still like, I still think you shouldn't cheer for them because, yeah, it was 12 and a half years ago, so... 
Um, sorry, but uh, I, I I think that it's it's past statute of limitations on that one. But you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. And again, I know there's a lot of teams on the board because again, any given season I can go, hey, I'd like to see them win. All right. Yeah, this is a good story. And so I pick up on good stories, whether it's a really good underdog story or you know a really emotional story involving players on a team as well. Maybe some kind of tragedy in their background. Maybe there is a curse that's involved, right? The Chicago Cubs aren't on the board. I could have put the Cubs on the board as well for baseball because there have been points where I've been like, you know, I really would like to see the Cubs win. So it's something that I know when I do hockey videos, I can't say out loud. You know, this year, I think it would be really fun if, because then people will say, what a bandwagoner. So I don't say it. I think it though, and I'll talk to my wife about it and say, you know who I really like right now is, insert name of team here. And the team I'm really not happy with is, insert name of team here. Um, I, I will give this allowance. It has been so much fun watching the Rangers this season in the National Hockey League. It's been a lot of fun watching Winnipeg as well. Um, Winnipeg's playing the style of hockey I think that you need to win. I'm only concerned that they're, they're peaking too soon. That's the only concern that I have right now with Winnipeg. Um, I would say I've been most frustrated watching Carolina. They're better than this. And... Um, I, I kind of want to say New Jersey, but they're a young team. Like, that core is young, so it's understandable they might have a bit of a setback. I, I still think they're going to win a championship soon. Uh, but, again, they were my Stanley Cup pick this year. We'll see. Um, and, and I think Minnesota's been better under the new coach. We'll see how far they can go, and there you go. So, and, and I don't think it's a huge coincidence that Minnesota and Winnipeg have kind of, you know, become teams that I say, it'd be great to see them go somewhere because those are my wife's favorite teams. So it's not just about, you know, oh, he wants, it's just for his wife. But you, you pay, at least for me, I pay a little more attention because of that. And yeah, so there you go. But let me know your thoughts as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you guys so much for all your support. Once again, I post videos to both channels over the Christmas break because not everybody has a Christmas break. So uh, thank you guys again. I'll talk to you soon enough.